Masan Kadiva has been described as one of the world's most influential voices for change in his homeland, Iran. So much so, he's been, he's been jailed for his political activism. He recently wrote an open letter to Egyptians warning about the blurring of religion and state in politics. Professor Kadiva lives in exile in the US. He's currently in Australia for a University of Sydney symposium on Islam and politics. Professor Kadiva, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you so much. I want to ask you firstly, um, what you see is going on in Egypt because we see the military and the government threaten for weeks now to remove the protesters in these sit-ins and yet at the last minute they back away and they leave them there. Is that a psychological game they're playing or does it reflect some degree of reticence, reluctance to, to go too far? I think they are under international pressure and some kind of falling back as you mentioned. Uh, the experience of Egypt is uh, similar to experience of Iran in 1953. On that time, we have a national uh, government in the name of Mohammed Mossadegh, and it was fell down by the UK and US coup, and also by some street demonstration, as we can see in, in Egypt Square. today. Yes. Yeah. And I think we should learn a lot from that experience. A streetocracy is different from democracy. So what we can see in Egypt is something far from democracy. An army in all of the countries could not be the tool of democracy, including Egypt. And I suppose the continuing detention of Mohammed Morsi adds to this sense of uncertainty, doesn't it? It undermines the very thing that these people are fighting for. I think the first thing, that if we want to solve the problem of Egypt, we should release Mohammed Morsi. We should not make him as a hero. If he will be in the jail, he will be the hero of the demonstrators. And the first step to solve all of these problems, release him. He was the elected president of this country. I criticized him when he was in power, but also in this time I criticized the military government also, the same as what he had done. You recently wrote an open letter to Egyptians saying to be very careful about the relationship between religion and state, and in this case the military, because you've seen this play out in Iran as well. What about Egypt today worries you based on your experience in Iran? On that open letter, I and my colleagues wrote something that please learn what we have in Iran. So we started by a revolution, but after that we have a theocracy. So do not make the same mistake in your the first draft of the constitution. But no, I, my concern is about involving the military in the politics, in the governance. It's something that completely far from any kind of democracy. Is you, you appeal for Iran not to, uh, for Egypt rather, not to go down this theocracy? Just explain that di distinction for us, because you draw this dis distinction between theocracy and democracy. And what evidence are you seeing of that in Egypt today? You know, in Egypt for six decades we have some kind of militarism. From Jamal Abdul Nasser, Anwar Sadat, Husni Mubarak, and now the first elected president is in prison. I cannot defend it. And you know, Egypt is the model for all Arab countries. If the democracy failed in a country like Egypt, we do not have any hope for the other uh, countries, that they look at the model of Egypt. So the best thing that we can, we can do, we should make pressure on this military government, please go, to, go back to your uh, places, and uh, it's the role of the people that if they want, they should change, and it's not in the street. You should go and vote. You worked very closely with Hassan Rouhani some years ago, who is now the new uh, president of Iran. The rhetoric that he's been speaking in, in recent weeks seems to, to deliver a lot of um, optimism for people there, that they're breaking away 
uh, from fundamentalism. Do you think, given that he holds a relatively small proportion of power in Egypt, how much faith do you have that he can affect the sort of change that people are expecting? In Iran? In Iran. You know, the youth and many Iranians have a lot of optimism on the new president. And I pray that it will happen. But to be honest, uh, we have a new president, not a new leader, not a new supreme leader. The leader hasn't and changed. No. And the only thing that I wait for, for that is in which level the mind of the supreme leader have been changed. Did he hear the message of the people, the message of change of many things in the country or not? Because this first round vote in which Hassan Rouhani won was quite overwhelming, wasn't it? It was quite a, a strong indication of where the people yes. stand politically. Exactly. And yesterday and today and also tomorrow, it's the vote of the parliament to the minister of Rouhani. So we wait because the key ministers, I think they were uh, determined by some kind of negotiation with the leader, with the supreme leader. And it's the role of the parliament. Did they, will they choose these, they confirm these ministers or not? I think after two, one or two days, I can tell you what's the, is there any room for this optimism or not? And in terms of the issue of where religion comes into that, because one of Hassan Rouhani's biggest tasks is to fix the economy. And these international sanctions, as far as Iran's nuclear program are concerned, are a big part of that. And so how does he navigate those issues and becoming more friendly with the West while also adhering to the, the, the Islamic principles of the leadership in Iran? The time of Rouhani is so difficult. On one hand, uh, he should uh, reconstruct the economy of Iran, corrupted the economy of the Ahmadinejad. The second thing, the pressure of the sanction from the West on the country. To be honest, uh, these sanctions made a lot of difficulty for the citizens, more than the government. And as an Iranian, the first demand of all Iranians Please stop the sanction. The Iranian are able to change everything themselves without any sanction. This sanction is against Iranians, is against the citizens more than the government. So the role of Rouhani in this in this case, I think he should convince the West, the US, that the, continuing the sanction is not a good idea, and we can. Uh, repair many things in the politics. And you know, nuclear energy is not the first test for Iranian. The first test is economics or freedom. And it's not nuclear energy what we have in the West.